Hi, my name is Connor Bradley, director of Softleaf Studios. This is a video about audio descriptions and how we as a studio are applying them to make our game Stories of Blossom accessible. But first, here is a quick in-game example. A small pink wispy creature emerges from a hollow in the tree and begins to glance side to side. That must be the singer's lost voice. Come here, you. The lost voice slides down the hollow and pops out the side, making a dash into the decorator's house. So to pose the question, why are audio descriptions important? Let's imagine a player who has no sight, who is playing a game without any descriptions. There is a lot of key information that we who can see often take for granted. The appearance of characters, their emotions at any given time, their current setting, and even the, the actual art style itself. If these things are not described, the player is left with the job of guessing. By not receiving this information, they cannot know what is happening or even what they have to do next. Annie the adventurer walks into a rural area. It is a calm spring day with clear blue skies and fresh green grass on hills. At the end of a long winding dirt path, the Crumble village stands in the distance. Oh, that must be the Crumble's village over there. Behind a blue lemonade stand with a sign of a golden ticket stands a crumble wearing a straw sun hat, happily fanning festival tickets in her hand. One ticket to the festival, please. I'll put this in my backpack for safekeeping. Early on in development, we identified potential barriers that were present in our game. We soon find there would be a lot of information that blind players would be missing out on. This is when we decided to take the audio description approach. In other media, audio descriptions is pretty well established, unlike games. So we looked there for help. We then took this knowledge to write lines for each area that was lacking in detail, coded in the playback system, and had gamers from the disabled community test our solutions. Their feedback continues to shape our game and we don't know where we would be without them. Outside the town hall stands a three-tiered fountain. On top is a small statue of the king in a heroic pose. Behind empty stalls is a row of houses, all of different sizes. There is colorful bunting and balloons swaying in a light breeze. In the town square was a small band of musicians getting ready to rehearse for the big event. On a bright red bandstand, there are three crumbles of various sizes, each waiting with their instrument. There is a tambourine, tuba and ukulele. The conductor, however, seemed very impatient. Tapping his foot is a moustached crumble, holding a baton at his side. Of course, we are still learning as we go, but if you have any questions about our approach to audio descriptions in games or have any feedback whatsoever, we would love to hear from you.